Hello and welcome to the next video on multiplication of integers. We're going to focus on two things in this video. The first thing is how to determine what sign your answer will be. So it will be positive or negative. The second thing we're going to focus on is just how to multiply by multiples of 10 and how can we use that to multiply more effectively. So the first thing I want to draw your attention to is the chart in the upper right. Here, this is how you can determine what your sign of your answer will be. It's easy to remember. If you have two integers with the same sign, so a positive multiplied by a positive or a negative multiplied by a negative, then your answer will always be positive. If you have two integers with the opposite sign, so a positive and a negative, and you're multiplying, then the answer will be negative. Let's do some examples. So in example number one here, we have 6 times 10. And just like with addition and subtraction, if you have no sign in front of an integer, we can assume that it's going to be positive. So in this case, I have a positive integer times a positive integer. Therefore, my answer will be positive. The second piece I want to focus on in this example is how to multiply by a multiple of 10. So when multiplying by a multiple of 10, and just a reminder, a multiple of 10 will end in a zero. So when you have this, uh, there is an easy strategy to use to determine the answer. You multiply the beginning parts of each integer. So here we have 6 times 1, and 6 times 1 is 6. Then all you have to do is count up the number of zeros in the problem. I have 1. I have 1, 0, and 10, and I simply add a 0 to my answer. So the answer is positive 60. So just to expand on that a little bit. If it was 6 times 100, it would be 600. 6 times 1,000 would be 6,000, etc. Let's try another example. Negative 50 times positive 4. Well, first things first, the sign. So I have a negative times a positive, so I know my answer is going to be negative. Now, I focus on the multiplication part. So here I have 4 times 5. Well, 4 times 5 is 20. Then I count up the number of zeros in my problem. There is 1, 0, and 50. And I can determine that the answer is negative 200. Let's try another example. Negative 23 times 6. First things first, let's determine the sign of our answer. So here I can see that it's a negative times a positive, And I know that when I have a negative and a positive, my answer will be negative. Now, 23 is not a multiple of 10. But we can write 23 in a way so that it is an addition problem with a multiple of 10. So in other words, I can rewrite 23 to be 20 plus 3. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that grouping times 6. And when you multiply by a grouping, I, I don't know if you remember the distributive property, but we can use a distributive property, to multiply 6 times 20 and add it to 6 times 3. Well, now I, these are easy multiplication problems, right? So 6 times 2 is 12. Uh, with a 0, right, because there's one 0. And 6 times 3 is 18. And now I have to just add 120 plus 18. So if you remember um, 
if you don't remember some of the strategies we talked about when doing addition, then um, you just have to go back and view those videos. But essentially what we need to do is we need to do 12 plus one in this case. So 12 plus one is 13. And I know I have eight plus zero in the ones place and I'm left with negative 138. Let's try another example. Negative eight times negative 39. So in this example, I have a negative times a negative, and I know when I have a negative times a negative, the answer is going to be positive. I have eight, so I can start there. And I want to multiply that by a rewriting of 39 into 30 plus 9. So now I just have to multiply 8 by each of these, which is not complicated uh, multiplication. Well, 8 times 3 is 24. And I have one zero, so that's 240. And 8 times 9 is 72. So now again, using my addition strategies here, I have 24 plus seven. Well, 24 plus six is 30, 30 plus one is 31. And then I look and I have two plus zero or 312. Let's try another one. In this example, I have 134 times negative 5. Well, I have a negative times a positive, so I know my answer is going to be negative. And then I'm going to rewrite 134 to be 100 plus 30 plus 4. And I'm going to multiply that grouping by 5. So again, we need to multiply by each one. Well, 5 times 1 is 5 with two zeros. 5 times 3 is 15 with one zero. And 5 times 4 is 20. I can see here that 150 plus 20 is 170. Right? Because 15 plus 2, right? And then I'm, I'm looking here and I just simply see, oh, I need to do 50 plus 17. So 50 plus 10 is 60. And 60 plus 7 is 67. And then I know I have 0 plus 0. So the answer is going to be negative 670. Let's try one, one more. In this example, I have negative 234 times negative 3. Well, a negative times a negative is going to be a positive. And then I can break 234 up into 200 plus 30 plus 4. And we're going to mu multiply this entire quantity by 3. So again, we're going to multiply each part. 3 times 2 is six, so, so, and then that with two zeros, so 600. Three times three is nine with one zero, and three times four is 12. So uh, as I'm writing here, all right, we have uh, nine plus one, so I know that this is gonna be 600 plus 10, with a two.
And now I'm, I'm looking here and I have 60 plus 10, right? Well, 60 plus 10 is 70. And I can see I have 2 plus 0. So it becomes um, 702. So that's our last example in this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask your math teacher or send us an email. Thanks.